Hi everyone, welcome to Game of Power. This is episode 10, technically season 2, episode 1. So super excited to, to be back. You know, we took the last three weeks off. And so I'm just super excited to be back and, and get this going again. We're going to have two guests on today. Our first guest is Smooth. And we're going to be talking about running a fashion brand and being an entrepreneur. And now our second guest is Shane Lee. Shane is a linebacker at USC. So let's kind of get right into it. But already, you know, we took a we took a little break, but I've been missing the show, so I'm happy happy we're back, happy to get everything going again, um, and just get on good guests for this season, like just have yo. Know, What's good, bro? What's going on, bro? Thank you, thank you so much for for hopping on the show. Welcome to Game of Power. Uh, do you want to just kind of introduce yourself real quick? Okay. Um. So my name is Smooth. Uh, my real name is Keyshawn, but I go by Smooth, and I'm the owner slash creative director of CR Clothing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me this. Tell me this. I I've been super uh, interested to pick your brain about entrepreneurship in general. I feel like you know it's everyone looks at it on the outside as a as a super glamorous thing but kind of in the trenches it, it it's not easy um tell me what do you why why are you an entrepreneur like what what made you kind of you know decide to do that because it's not it's not easy obviously it's not for everybody um okay so i think um you're definitely right about you know as far as um business um being a business owner and a brand owner um it's not what everybody would think it is um but i always i think you always kind of have a knack um where you kind of always know what you're good at um from a very young age i've always knew that i could hustle you know but i've all i, can, I knew i could make money um but i think when you you know you, you have things that you have true passion about that when you put your mind to it and do it it exemplifies you know but there's a whole other side of work that goes to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's, it's, it's really strategic when, you know, when you're, when we're talking about fashion, you know, that's one of the hardest industries to really be a part of um, because it's scrutinized. Um, people are, people are picky about what they eat or not, well, not what they eat, what they wear just as much as, you know, what they eat type of thing, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Tell me this. I read that you actually had a fashion brand in the past. Uh, before before you went to college, and so I'm curious to know, like, based on you know you running your your new brand for for the last three years, what what advice would you give to the kid that tried to start a brand back in high school? Um, man, you got the time. You got the time right there. Um, if you got the capital to do what you want to do, um, and I've learned that it doesn't take much capital. Um, to really start a brand, um, you can really do this type of thing, um, or maybe five hundred, six hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Um, but as far as you're, you're gonna give up. You're gonna sacrifice one thing, one or two things. Um, when you have a brand and you're a business owner, you're either gonna sacrifice time or you're gonna sacrifice money. You know what I'm saying? So if you're gonna give if you give more money, you might not give as much time or you have time to do other things. But if you give more time, you find that, you know, you, you tr find true passion in what it is you do. You learn about things. You learn so much more. Um, but in high school, man, you got the time. You know what I'm saying? If you if you if you're in high school right now and you want to start a brand. Or you, you have brand aspirations, start now because you need to go through your trials and you're going to go through your trials and tribulations regardless. Like I could have, you know, started this brand years ago, but you know, I kind of, it's a battle with your mind that you go through. Um, you know, if you can do it or not, you know, I mean, I probably could have found a way to do it back in high school, but I, I, I didn't for whatever reason. Um, but find the time and, and give time to what it is you truly love to do. Um, and, and be, but be willing to sacrifice, um, be, be willing to sacrifice for what it is you truly love. You know what I'm saying? I think I read somewhere that, um, or it might've been on a TV show, but I think sacrifices, sacrifices define your outcome. You know what you sacrifice, you know, a, a lot of people want to live certain lifestyles, um, or do certain things, but 
it takes a it takes a certain amount of sacrifice. And I'm not talking about no crazy, you know, nothing crazy. But um, a lot of people would think stuff is just luck. But a lot of times, thing is really hard work. You know what I'm saying? You you don't know how how long someone has been kicking at a certain door. You know what I'm saying before it opens for them. Um, so yeah, I, I would say, man, if you got the time, because when you get the time, you you give the time. Like if you look at just how you structure your day, we give so much time to. It, it's the little things like um. Just there, there's so much out here on where we live in a technology era, man, and the internet. There's so much out here, um, but you have to take the time to find what it is you really want. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. even as far as finding designers, you're always going to look for a specific look. You know what I'm saying? You're going to um, – it, it takes a little bit of digging when you're really talking about creating something from, you know, nothing. We can look at this jacket yeah. right here. Um, I have taught myself – I didn't go to – I went to school for um, – I went to college for computers. So, you know, I, I'm not the most tech savvy guy, but, you know, that's that's what, you know, I, I went to school for. But I taught myself how to design um, from YouTube, you know what I'm saying, um, a couple videos, one video. But now I can design, you know what I'm saying. I went from not knowing how to do it at all to, you know, designing this jacket, you know, things like that. Yes, um, sir. You know, you got to – but I gave so much – it was a lot of frustration behind me learning how to be able to create something like this. You know what I'm saying? Um, but you got to give your, you know what I'm saying? But you don't want to stress yourself out with what it is you do. I, I realize that I'm a perfectionist and I'm, I'm reading about it right now. You know what I'm saying? There is no thing. There is no such thing as a perfectionist. You, you can never Absolutely. be perfect. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So it's, it's more so about completion with anything you do. You know what I'm saying? Especially I, I'm, I'm a man. So, you know what I'm saying? Men have to be thorough in what we do. You know what I'm saying? To make sure things get done, things get handled. Businesses, you know, people are being taken care of. Um, so that's what I, I just try to, you know, apply some of those principles, apply, apply a lot of the life principles that I just have for myself that I've learned through, you know, playing football, um, various leadership camps, you know, being a part of very, very young, very early. But I think, like, I had a natural, my, my, my God-given talent was hustling. Like, you know, being able to come up with creative ways to, you know, put money in my pocket type of thing. Yeah. Um, but all of those, all of those intangibles that you can be taught, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have some, I feel like I have something that sets me apart, but it's in me, you know what I'm saying? But the, the structure of being able to have a business and, you know, even seeking business counseling and learning from business owners that have came before me because, Hustling, yes, you have you have to have a type of hustle, but you also want to make sure the structure of what yeah. it is you're doing. Um, and I know the title of this is running a brand um, or operating a brand. A brand, I feel like a brand and a business are two different things. You know what I'm saying? We have talk a, about that. Yeah, like we we we. Um, I think there's a lot of brands right now but there's fewer businesses than there are brands. You know what I'm saying? Um, because in today's society or the clothing, the fashion world, the clothing brand world, a lot of, how would I put it? People shoot a lot of times for like the social justification. So that like the clout, you know what I'm saying? The clout, people shoot for the clout. But clout doesn't always equal a, a a good business model, a good business foundation, you know, something that you build. You know what I'm saying? So I've always I've always stood on that. And that's I'm not trying to discourage anybody. I'm just educating and let people know that there's a little you know what I'm saying? Like you can a brand has its own meaning in my eyes. You know what I'm saying? A brand is what you stand for, what you deliver, you know, um, customer service, you know, what people expect from you. That's the brand part of it, you know what I'm saying? But having a, a legal business, you know what I'm saying? That's that's a different that's a different ball game. You know, we're talking about understanding your numbers and wanting to, you know, learning projections and things of that sort. And that's something that you can learn at any point of being a business owner. You know what I'm saying? Regardless if you have an LLC or not, you know, an S corp, anything, you can you you should know whatever business it is that you're getting into. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know? You, you wouldn't 
you wouldn't invest your money into anything you don't really know about. So when you start a business, why not? Why don't you know everything about it is to know about your business? You know what I'm saying? For sure. For sure. Tell me this. You you started this by talking about sacrifice. And I think I think sacrifice is a big thing that even we we as entrepreneurs have to have to engulf ourselves in. But we don't always um, it's hard to make those decisions. It's hard to make those those true sacrifices. What are what do you think? are some things that you have to sacrifice to, you know, run a successful business or be an entrepreneur? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I would say me. Um, I'm a little bit different cause I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice it all. You know, I'm not gonna say I'm different, but in my head, in my head, I'm different. Um, cause I sacrifice what I have to, um, like I said, majority of it is time, but the time that I spend like dealing with my brand, it empowers me. It feels great. You know what I'm saying? Like this, this thing that I have now, it started from nothing. Everything starts from nothing at some point in time. You know, Fitz has started, Fitz didn't exist, you know, before you created yeah. it, before it was created. You know what I'm saying? So as an entrepreneur, as the person that literally pushed it to get where it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, Bro, we're talking about late nights, early mornings, you know. Um, I actually started off my brand by making everything. So I, I, opposed to having a vendor from the start, I actually, like, I ordered 300 blank shirts. Like, when I first started my brand, I didn't know they were black, gray, and white. I ordered <laughs> 300 of them. Like, I just went crazy. Um didn't even I still got some of those shirts now, but it was the idea of dreaming big. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care what you know what happens. I need to have all these. I need to have 300 shirts. You know, for my for this yep. brand that I say I'm going to start. Um, so I would say sacrificing, sacrificing your time, missing out on some of the fun events. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might not always be able to go to the club with your friends or go out. Um, me, I operated my brand for one year my senior year while I was in school. Um, so that, that was even then, bruh, I, I finessed that whole, bro. I focused, I focused on my brand. Like I was excelling yeah. my brand, doing what I had to do to get my brand to where I, I really wanted it to be. Um, but I think like after graduating that point, just from that point to now, I've seen my business excel to, you know, a different heights, but I also went through, a lot of a lot of stuff you know what i'm saying yeah um just because it th things get real when you got more responsibilities as a man you know what i'm saying like i left um i, I graduated and two weeks later i was working in corporate america you know what i'm saying like that was a that, that was a challenge itself um you know moving out on your own moving away from family type of thing you know what i'm saying like you go through a lot of different you go through a lot of different changes yeah, bro. For sure. and it, it makes it your personal life affects how you operate your business. I'm reading about that right now as well. You know what I'm saying? But that's just something that you know off bat. Um, Tell me this. But, Tell me this. What's you, up? Your, uh, I love your, your brand's name. And I think create your own reality is very similar to, like, how we always say, like, create your world. Um, I'm curious I to know from you, like, what does it mean to create your own reality? And, like, what does that entail? Man, creating your own reality is something that anybody could do. It's literally like, it's. I feel like it's so universal. Like you could break it down into anything, but it all means the same thing. You know what I'm saying? As far as you decide what it is you want to do in life. Nobody. If if you get to a point of letting someone else decide your own reality for you, you kind of screwed. But if you wake up with a mindset, you know what I'm saying. I. We all have bosses. We all have people we have to, you know, maybe answer to type of thing. But at the end of the day, do you call shots for your life or not? You know what I'm saying? Like, I think one of my taglines is be the director of your life. So that means every day, you know what I'm saying? From the time I wake up and I'm hitting action to the time I go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? I make decisions on how it is I want to live my life. I don't let anyone else tell me what it is I want to do. Um... I take advice from people and I, you know, I, I, I get inspired from folks, which I got my homeboy. I'm going to shout him out. My homeboy, Desmond. Um, I got his shirt on today. Uh, inspired. That's something that I stand for. You know what I'm saying? So 
I wake up every day regardless if, you know, I'm on the bad side or the good side. At the end of the day, I know I want to somehow maybe inspire somebody some way. You know what I'm saying? Or do something to motivate somebody type of thing to, you know, just create your own reality is, is going to everybody. It's it's caught on, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's meant for so many more people. 100%. You know? so that's what it'll 100%, do. 100%. 100%. I definitely agree, bro. And I think I love how you said it's something that everybody can do. And it's about kind of putting force and power into your life, like putting force and power into everything that you do. So really appreciate you for hopping on the show, bro. Um, it's been great to meet you. Is there anything else you want to say or shout out or, you know, give a, um, give a little gem on your way out? Uh, shout out to the team, man. Shout out to the CR community. I appreciate y'all for getting us to a point to people, you know, want to inquire and want to learn more about the brand. That means we're doing something right. So we're going to keep pushing. Um, I appreciate Fitz for the collaboration. You know what I'm saying? Y'all definitely be seeing a lot of Sior X Fitz collabs um, and things. Matter of fact, we're actually going to drop merchandise. All merchandise is on sale, um, $30 and under. We're going to put our inventory on Fitz. So if you, you know what I'm saying, you find out about us from Fitz, make sure you go shop. You get what I'm saying, through Fitz. So appreciate that, yes, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, man. Have a good one. We'll talk you too. Soon. All right, let's get into it. We about to have on Shane Lee. I'm excited. I've been thinking about the question I'm about to ask him. Yo. What's going on? Bro, I want to get straight into it. Because I've been All thinking right. about the question that I wanted to ask you ever since we got off the phone today. All right, tell me right. this. Football is not an easy sport to play, right? And just, like, kind of navigating through – you know, your last few years, you've, you've, you've had a lot of, you know, different things that, 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 that have happened to you. Tell me this, what motivates you? Uh, I think the thing that motivates me most is just not being stuck in where I'm at. Like my whole mindset between like, for moving forward in life or in anything I do is just like, I know what it's like to be where I'm at right now. If that makes sense. Like I know, if I were like, if I do what I do right now, like I know what that gets me. Like, what happens if I put in more work, or what happens if I do this a little different, or what happens if I do that a little different? Like, you'll get different results. And so, for me, it's just about learning and experimenting, and uh, trying to grow in the way that I want to. Honestly. Okay. Okay. I definitely think I definitely think growth is growth is everything, and we we kind of talked about this the other week when we talked about kind of what is failure and I talked about how I feel yeah. like failure is at a point where you are comfortable, where, where you're not struggling. Yeah, exactly. You're not, you're not facing things that are, that are uncomfortable. Tell me this, like what, at what points in, in your life over the last kind of year have, have been points of growth? Like what, like points of struggle, what different things do you think you've been through that, that have been there and you came out on the other side uh, stronger? Um, definitely like the injury. Injury is like the, the injury is like the biggest thing where I feel like my life slowed down almost to like a standstill. You're like, all right, where do I go from here? Because a lot of times like there's things that slow you down, um, but you're able to like keep moving and kind of just, you know, make plays on the, on the fly. But that, that really slowed things down like a lot. Like where I was like, all right, well, you really got to figure out like how to get out of this one. And so... That that's a big one, but I think the biggest thing is just just my mindset, figuring out like how my mind works, the the traps that my mind sets for itself, as far as uh, you know, just knowing what to do and what not to do for me, my like for me personally, like what works for me, and uh, I think learning those things about myself helped me not get in those traps, not fall into those same places that like you can you can easily fall into, kind of just learning about you and what you do. It's always like we sure. talk about just trying to stay active and keep on um, getting better and just grow. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. A lot of people kind of see you on the football field. I wanted to kind of ask you about something that else you've been working on. Uh, tell me a little bit about what Puppet Master means to you, and like yeah. kind of where where you're coming from in that. Yeah, so Puppet Master is my business, man. Um, really just 
I wanted to create something where I can pull the strings, be behind everything and pull the strings. Uh, I really just want to help people figure out different ways I can get in the community, create businesses to help people, whether it be, you know, giving people jobs or just opportunity elsewhere. Um, it's honestly something that's it's still new, it's still fresh, but it's something that is uh, it's growing quickly. And I'm very excited for Um Got some things coming up, some collaborations coming up that I'm excited about for sure. So definitely stay okay. tuned for that. Yeah, no, I, I I love that. And you know, it's interesting. I love how um, they asked you about about your favorite book, and you said you said the the Four Agreements. I think that yeah. that's that's an interesting call. What what do you like about the Four Agreements? Um, I think just the time in which I got that book is was so crucial. And the message that it sent was was so key for that time in my life. I think that just it, it that book sparked a huge amount of growth for me, just as a person, at that point in time. But there's there's a ton of books that I love um, that impact me in a lot of different ways. Like we talk about the Five AM Club all the time. We both read The Alchemist, and there's a ton of books that we both read that uh, are beneficial to us. But just for whatever reason, like that one, it was like planting a seed and like fertile soil and like the rain coming down at the perfect time and you're like man like there could have been no better book at no better time than this right here so it was just a really good moment uh for me to have that book honestly 100 100 percent. i felt the same way when i read it and i feel like one thing that i've been kind of interested in lately is like a lot of times people will tell you to read a bunch of different books but I really think if you have like a few books yeah. that you like, that's like you read yeah. that all the time. Like I'm on, yeah. I'm on a point where I've read different parts of the Five AM Club like six times. I'm like I feel like I don't even need any other books when it comes yeah. down to that. So I think like, yeah, a lot of people tell you read a bunch of different books, but I think like you should find the books that mean the most to you and consistently follow whatever is in there. I think like that's that's the job. Yeah, I think that's the key to a lot of things, right? Like. People do that with food, do it with people, do it with clothes, things. Like, you got to find what works for you. That's what I'm big on, bro. It's just, like, whatever works for you, figure that out and and maximize it. Use it, tweak it, you know? Like, why not? If you know if you know what works, there's nothing wrong with trying new things out. But if you know, like, this thing right here works, then, man, maximize that. Why not? Tell me this. Tell me this. I think... Obviously, football is a very physical sport, right? And, you know, you're, we're talking about books. We're talking about things that you're learning. How, how do you think that, you know, reading books or, or learning new things, how do you think that translates to you and being excellent on the football field? Uh, I think the biggest thing is, like, just mental. Everything starts from the mind. So just trying to figure out, um, you know, books I read a lot about like the mind and perspective and mindset and things like that. So, I mean, that's, that's really what football is. As physical as football is, it's more so mental. And so just creating a safe space for your mind, not letting your mind run you, but you running your mind and really having control over it and what it thinks and what it does is, uh, is key, especially on the football field. You know, it's uh, a lot of stuff that you can't control. So like something like your mind, you, you got to be able to control that, especially in those chaotic moments. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Tell me this. Let's let's kind of let's dive into football a little bit. I know a lot of people, a lot of USC fans that are are in the building right now. Um, you're three and zero. You know what I mean. Um, how are you? How have you feel? How are you feeling about your football season? How are you feeling about kind of how you've been playing and and how your team's been going so far? Yeah, man, it's a good start. Three and zero, but I don't know, man. I look at it just like it's just the beginning. I like guess it's, it's literally the first, you know, three games, which is it's flown by, but we still have the rest of the season to play. Like, I'm excited, man. Like, I've I've felt this way since I got here. Like, the people on our team are, are special, our coaches, our players, like our staff. That's just something around that building. Like, when we walk around every day, like, I, I get butterflies and get chills sometimes, man. It's like, man, you know, like, we're putting, we're putting in work. Like, we're doing something special. Um but, yeah, I'm just excited, man. We have a lot of potential. Um, just a lot of room to grow. Like, that's exciting to me. As much as as much success as we have, there's a lot of stuff that we've left on the field. And uh, 
to know that we get to go to work every day and, and work on that kind of stuff gets me excited because we can like there's no limit to what we could be so yes sir yes sir tell me this you have been on championship teams you you obviously have a national championship yourself what is what's the difference what do you think like what makes a championship team where does it start uh the details consistency in the details i'd say it's like the biggest thing bro just in, like the successful people that i've i've looked at i've been around um the stories that you hear it's just like the little things the day to day the things that other people over overlook but uh it's just the consistency in the details um like waking up every day and like doing like i said doing the things you know you need to do doing the things that work for you um doing the things that, like you know like this is going to work but it's honestly those are the things that are like the hardest things to keep up there they're so tedious sometimes you get bored with them but it's like like yeah the people that can do those the best consistently i think those are the champions i like that i like that and i definitely think that that's that's key consistency in general like even even for me like i haven't you know i haven't been feeling that motivated recently like you know in the past 3 weeks or so but i realized like motiv- motivation's overrated yeah like it's all about consistency like it'll, you're, it'll you're always consistent. leave you bro <laughs> exactly tell me this what do you think you know what i mean you have a you just got back on the field what do you think you know what do you want to work on what do you want to improve on as as the season goes on what different you know parts of your game are you trying to improve on uh the whole thing i'm just trying to get better get more comfortable play faster play more free bro i mean shoot it's like it's the beginning of the season like we just got back outside like it's it's still fresh it's still new so just getting comfortable honestly okay okay yeah all right man well it's been it's been great to watch you play i'm super excited to to see the rest of the season but obviously i'm going to be out there in la uh next month so Yep. See how everything's going. Anything else you want to touch on before you leave? Nah, man. Just uh keep on being great, brother. Yeah, appreciate you, man. Have a good Always. one. You too. Thank you. It's been great watching watching USC. It's been great watching him play again. I think that uh like for the for those of you that don't know, we met in kindergarten. And so it's uh seeing him kind of go from you know being a kid to getting out and and playing on that type of stage has been incredible so you know shout out USC football shout out Shane and yeah a lot of a lot of good things to come for the rest of the episode i don't want to get into everything too much maybe i'll just kind of talk about things i feel like talking about today the eagles play the vikings tomorrow and i'm just super excited to to watch the game i'm happy that football season's back i feel like you know on Sundays where the Cowboys lose and the Eagles win i think that's that that's the perfect way to uh to begin the new week so love that uh, how to dragon is tonight yes sir how to i'm gonna, i'm going to talk about that actually how to dragon is tonight and yeah like game of thrones best show ever so i'm i'm just uh excited to watch that as well justin just said power struggle um power struggle is a shirt that i'm wearing right now and It's crazy kind of obviously this show is called Game of Power and I feel like Power Struggles where it all started. Um I became an entrepreneur in 2017 and this was like my first shirt me and my friends made this design and we really just wanted to to spread a message in our community. And I feel like that's what business is. I think a business is something that helps people and if you can kind of find what you're passionate about find messages that you want to spread take that from within and turn it into work i think that that is that's like one of the best things you can do for people and so i feel like everything that i do now everything that we do as at fits is all related to power struggle it's about creating opportunities for you know people that have been held back uh due to the unfortunate realities of society so i feel like you know i'm super interested in, in just continuing the mission and continue with being an entrepreneur i'll give you a little updates for fits we um we have the create platform built again so if you're a graphic designer and you make logos product graphics cover art 
um, reach out to me. I'm going to obviously try to find all of you as well. But um, we created a space for you to, you know, get listings and, and, and get money. And so I definitely, you know, want to tap in with as many different graphic designers as possible. If you're looking for logos, cover art, or product graphics, uh, Fitz would be the perfect place for that as well. Other than that, um, there's a lot of other exciting news, exciting things that we're going to be getting into, but uh, I'll leave that, that news for another day. But this is episode one of season two, Game of Power, where we'll hopefully have a lot of different brands on. We'll have a lot of different entrepreneurs, creators. Um, I just want to talk to more people. I want to learn new things. I want to have an actor on the show and kind of pick their brain a little bit. Um, but yeah, if you if there's anyone that you all think should be on Game of Power, please just uh, send them my way. And like, I'd love to, you know, connect and just have good, strong conversations. I feel like that's kind of what this this place is all about. So super excited to to keep this going. And yeah, let's see it. See, see where this takes us. Uh, appreciate you.